All right, so you think you're mature, huh? Got your own Netflix account, maybe a plant that's still alive, and you sort of managed to feed yourself without causing a kitchen fire. Congratulations, you've officially fooled everyone into thinking you're an adult. But hold up. Being mature is more than just keeping your cactus alive or knowing how to cook something other than instant noodles. Let's unwrap this mysterious burrito of adulthood and find out what's really inside. Is it just more beans or is there some actual beef in there? The science behind growing up. All right, let's crack open the skull, not literally, and peek at what's going on in your brain as you stagger down the path to maturity. Remember when you were a kid and your biggest problem was choosing between chocolate and vanilla ice cream? Well, buckle up because your brain's been cooking up a storm since then. In the teenage brain, we have this magical wonderland known as the frontal lobe. This is the CEO of your brain, responsible for planning, decision-making, and moderating social behavior. Basically, it's the part of your brain that would scream, bad idea, when you think about texting your ex at 2 a.m. But here's the kicker. This part of your brain isn't fully developed until you're about 25 years old. That's right. The brain's executive branch is under construction for a good chunk of your young adult life. Now, while the frontal lobe is laying down its final wiring, there's a whole lot of neural activity happening. Neuroplasticity, or the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections, is at a peak. This is crucial because it means your brain is super receptive to learning new things, languages, skills, you name it. It's a prime time for setting up the fundamentals of who you are and how you approach problems. Think of it as your brain setting up the default settings that you might rely on for a good part of your adult life. But it's not just about the hardware. There's also the software, hormones. These chemical messengers are the apps running in the background, influencing everything from your mood to how you interact with others. During adolescence and into young adulthood, Hormonal changes can make you feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster. This isn't just puberty talking. It's your body adjusting to a new equilibrium. The hormones that get a lot of airtime are estrogen and testosterone. These two are in the driver's seat, steering a lot of your physical development and also affecting your mood and behavior. Another hormone that deserves a shout out is cortisol, the stress hormone. When you're young, Figuring out the maze of social interactions, academic pressures, and maybe even your first job, cortisol can be running high. It's your body's built-in alarm system that reacts to stress and helps you handle it. Unfortunately, too much of it for too long can be like running a car engine at high RPMs all the time. You'll wear out. Let's talk about another interesting piece of the puzzle, sleep. During the teen years, melatonin, the hormone that regulates sleep, is released later in the night, which is why so many teens are night owls. Ever wonder why waking up for school feels like being dragged out of a swamp? That's your melatonin levels telling you it's not time yet. This shift in sleep cycle is a natural part of brain development, but it clashes with early school start times. Lack of sleep can mess with everything from your mood to your ability to think clearly. And here's a brain twist, risk taking. The adolescent brain is primed to take risks. This might sound like a bug in the system, but it's actually a feature. Taking risks can lead to great things like innovation and personal growth. It's the brain's way of saying, let's try new things and see what works. The downside? Sometimes what feels like a calculated risk is more like jumping off a cliff hoping there's water below instead of rocks. Emotional intelligence. This is the skill to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions, and to recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. In simpler terms, it's about being smart with feelings, yours and everyone else's. The roots of emotional intelligence can be traced back to different brain functions. This involves areas like the amygdala, the alarm bell of the brain that processes emotions, the prefrontal cortex, the region involved in decision-making and social behavior, and the hippocampus, integral for memory and learning from past experiences. When these areas work well together, they form the architecture of EI, helping you navigate social complexities with grace and effectiveness. 
Understanding your own emotions is like having a detailed map of a complex landscape. It involves more than just identifying feelings. It's about peeling back the layers to uncover the why behind the what. This insight allows you to predict how you might react in different situations, prepare accordingly, and manage your reactions in real time. Say for instance, you know that you're prone to stress before a big presentation. With this self-awareness, you can take steps to mitigate this stress, perhaps through deep breathing exercises or positive self-talk, thus steering clear of panic and maintaining your composure. Now, managing emotions isn't about suppressing them. <laughs> Far from it. It's about directing them in a way that is appropriate and productive. For instance, feeling anger in a situation is completely normal, but knowing how to express that anger without lashing out can be the difference between a constructive discussion and a full-blown argument. It's about finding healthy outlets for emotions and not letting them dictate your actions impulsively. On the flip side, emotional intelligence also involves being attuned to the emotions of others. This is where empathy plays a crucial role. Empathy is the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, to feel what they are feeling and see things from their perspective. It doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with the other person, but understanding the emotional undercurrents of their experience. In practice, this could mean noticing when a friend is down and offering a listening ear, or recognizing when someone is uncomfortable in a situation and helping to ease their discomfort. Developing emotional intelligence doesn't happen overnight. It's a skill that can be honed over time with practice and patience. Engaging in reflective practices like journaling can help you become more aware of your emotional triggers and patterns. Additionally, active social interactions provide opportunities to practice empathy and fine-tune your communication skills. Feedback from trusted friends or mentors can also offer valuable insights into how you handle emotions and relate to others. As young adults venture further into the landscape of adulthood, the role of emotional intelligence becomes increasingly evident. It's a tool that empowers them to manage life's challenges with greater awareness and sensitivity, fostering relationships that are both meaningful and sustaining. In the grand scheme of maturity, emotional intelligence is less about reaching a destination and more about evolving through the journey, continuously learning and adapting as life unfolds. Societal Expectations Ever feel like society has a checklist for being a mature adult? Graduate from school, get a job, maybe find a life partner, and don't forget to smile for the Instagram post while doing it all. But who writes these rules anyway? And what does following them, or not, say about your maturity? Societal expectations can feel like a game where the rules keep changing depending on where you are and who you're with. These norms are baked into the culture, passed down through generations, and are influenced by everything from economic conditions to popular media. They shape how we think about maturity and the milestones associated with it. For instance, in many parts of the US, turning 18 is a big deal. You can vote, join the military, and are legally recognized as an adult. But let's be real. Does blowing out 18 candles magically impart wisdom and maturity? Not quite. The journey to maturity involves a lot more than simply aging. It includes gaining life experiences, making informed decisions, and understanding the consequences of your actions. In the current digital age, societal expectations have morphed under the influence of social media. Platforms like Instagram and TikTok not only connect us, but also create a showcase for a curated form of perfection. The pressure to appear successful, happy, and accomplished can skew our understanding of what real maturity looks like. It's not about having a flawless life, it's about handling life's imperfections gracefully. Moreover, these platforms highlight the speed at which some people achieve success, whether it's in their careers, relationships, or personal lives. This can lead to unrealistic expectations for young adults, who may feel they're falling behind if they haven't started a successful side hustle or found the love of their life by their mid-20s. But maturity isn't a race, and there's no one-size-fits-all timeline. Gender expectations also play a significant role in how maturity is perceived. Traditionally, men were expected to be the breadwinners, and women, the caregivers. While these roles have evolved significantly, 
Remnants of these expectations can still influence how mature someone is perceived to be based on their ability to fulfill these roles. For example, a young woman who prioritizes career over starting a family may face different societal judgments compared to her male peers. What about when things go sideways? Life isn't always smooth, and how you handle setbacks is a real test of maturity. Society tends to respect those who can face difficulties with resilience and a clear head, rather than buckling under pressure. This means learning to cope with failure, managing stress, and sometimes making tough decisions without a safety net in sight. Independence and Responsibility Stepping into the realm of independence is a significant milestone on the journey to maturity. It's not just about living on your own or paying your own bills, though those are certainly part of the equation. True independence involves taking full responsibility for your actions and their consequences, making decisions based on informed judgment, and managing your life without relying excessively on others. Independence starts with the small stuff. For many young adults, it begins with managing their time effectively. This could mean setting your own schedule, balancing work and play, or simply making sure you don't overspend your energy reserves. It also means taking charge of your finances. Budgeting isn't just about making sure you can pay rent each month. It's about planning for the future, saving for unexpected expenses, and understanding the impact of financial decisions. But financial and time management are just the surface. Deeper independence involves emotional and psychological self-sufficiency. It's about being able to comfort yourself when things get tough, making peace with your own company and not relying on others to validate your feelings or choices. This form of independence is crucial because it fosters a sense of inner stability that doesn't waver with the ups and downs of life. Then there's the responsibility aspect. Being independent means more than just taking care of yourself. It also means acknowledging your role in the wider community. This could manifest as understanding how your actions affect others, taking an active role in community service, or simply being a considerate neighbor. It's about contributing to the world around you in a positive way. Responsibility also extends to the obligations that come with adult life. This includes being dependable in both personal and professional settings. At work, it might mean meeting deadlines and fulfilling commitments without needing constant reminders. In personal relationships, it means being someone others can rely on, keeping your word, and showing up when it counts. Relationships and Empathy As we mature, our ability to handle relationships, romantic, platonic, and professional, evolves, and so does our grasp of that golden social skill, empathy. Building and maintaining relationships is an art form where the medium is emotional intelligence. Remember that gem from Chapter 2? It's about more than just sharing memes and knowing when to nod sympathetically. It requires an understanding of the subtle nuances of human emotions and an awareness of the invisible lines that should not be crossed. For instance, consider the skill of listening. Not just waiting for your turn to speak while someone else's mouth is moving, but actually absorbing, processing, and responding thoughtfully to what the other person is saying. It's crucial in all relationships because, let's face it, everyone wants to feel heard, whether it's venting about a bad day, sharing a wild dream, or brainstorming in a meeting. Now, empathy is the heavyweight champion in the ring of relationship skills. It goes beyond simply recognizing someone else's feelings. It's about connecting with them on an emotional level. Picture this. Your friend just got their dream job, and you're so happy for them you could burst, but not out of jealousy. That's empathy in action, celebrating their win as if it's your own. Humor is another key player in building strong relationships. It's the glue in many social interactions. But here's the kicker. The humor has to be appropriate. Cracking a joke during a serious meeting or laughing at your own puns when no one else does might not earn you the camaraderie you're hoping for. Knowing when to inject humor and when to keep it corked is part of relationship wisdom. But relationships aren't always about sunshine and shared laughter. They also involve navigating conflicts without turning into a reality TV show. Mature handling of disagreements involves being assertive, yet respectful, expressing your needs without trampling over someone else's, and knowing when to compromise and when to stand firm. This is where many adults find themselves playing a balancing act, 
trying to maintain harmony without sacrificing their own needs and boundaries. In an age where ghosting, breadcrumbing, and other charming trends are just a few clicks away, maintaining meaningful connections requires more effort. It involves picking up the phone and calling someone instead of just liking their posts or sending a text. It means being present in the moments you share with others, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally too. Developing and maintaining mature relationships is a continuous process. It's about growing with your connections, learning from them, and contributing to them in ways that enrich both your life and the lives of those around you. So, whether you're dealing with a heartbreak, a misunderstanding with a friend, or a challenging colleague, remember that the way you handle these relationships often reflects your own level of maturity. And, of course, a well-timed, appropriate joke can sometimes save the day. Decision-making. The unavoidable daily challenge that can be as trivial as choosing between tacos or pizza for dinner, or as monumental as deciding which career path to follow. As you grow into the fabulous cloak of maturity, the decisions get tougher. And no, you can't just flip a coin for every life choice, though that might make things interesting. Mature decision-making involves weighing options considering consequences, and sometimes dealing with the fact that the adult menu doesn't always serve up a win-win. It's about navigating through the fog without a GPS, making the best choice with the information you have. For starters, think about how you make decisions. Do you go with your gut, or do you compile a spreadsheet with pros and cons? Both approaches have their merits, but as you mature, the spreadsheet method, though less spontaneous, often leads to fewer, what was I thinking, moments. That said, trusting your instincts isn't without value. It's like having an internal compass that points you in the right direction, especially in personal matters. The trick is to balance gut feelings with rational thought. Financial decisions are a real adulting test. It's tempting to splurge on that shiny new gadget or a fancy vacation, but mature decision-making means considering your future financial needs too. It's like looking at your bank account and asking, if I buy this now, will future me want to travel back in time and shake some sense into present me? Managing money wisely is a cornerstone of adult life, ensuring you won't have to eat instant noodles for a month because you overdid it on the shopping spree. Then, there's the social arena. Deciding whom to trust, whom to date, or even whom to befriend involves more than just shared interests or chemistry. It's about recognizing values, observing actions, and understanding motivations. It's easy to make friends over a shared love of movies or music, but the best decisions often come from deeper connections based on mutual respect and genuine compatibility. And let's not forget about the dreaded career decisions. Choosing a job or a career path hmm. isn't just about passion, sorry, dreamers. It's also about practical aspects like growth opportunities, job security, and yes, Salary. It's balancing what you love with what will ensure you don't end up living in your parents' basement well into your 30s. Gender Differences in Maturity Let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should we say, the different ways boys and girls march toward maturity. It's not just about who grows taller faster or who needs to shave first. It's about the brain, emotions, and societal expectations that often run on different timelines for guys and gals. Studies suggest that girls often hit maturity milestones earlier than boys. This isn't about sprinting to the finish line of maturity. It's more like girls get the head start in the race. Neurologically, their brains tend to develop at a faster clip. They start speaking in full sentences while some boys are still grunting and pointing at what they want. And emotionally, girls are often ahead here too handling complex emotions with the finesse of a seasoned diplomat, while some boys might still be solving disputes with rock, paper, scissors. But before we crown the girls as the maturity champions, let's remember, maturity isn't a one-size-fits-all hat. Boys catch up eventually, usually. In fact, in some areas like spatial reasoning and physical coordination, boys often take the lead. Ever wonder why that dude in your class could throw a paper airplane right into the trash can from across the room? Yep, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. 
Now, let's break down how this plays out in real life. In school, girls might be more likely to ace tests and hand in projects on time, while some boys are still figuring out that the deadline was not a gentle suggestion. In relationships, young women might be ready to talk about feelings and build emotional connections, while young men might still be mastering the art of not making every conversation about video games or sports. The social expectations don't make it any easier. Girls are often encouraged to be responsible and nurturing from a young age, while boys are frequently allowed to revel in the boys will be boys narrative a bit longer. This doesn't just shape how they act, it shapes how they grow. Girls wearing the badge of maturity like a medal may seem ahead, but remember, everyone has their own pace. The culture of maturity. Maturity isn't a universal remote that works the same way in every corner of the globe. What's considered mature in one culture can be seen as downright childish in another. Let's take a world tour of maturity, without the jet lag and currency exchange headaches. In the United States, maturity often means moving out of your parents' house as soon as you can, getting a job, and managing your own insurance. But cross over to Italy, and you might find adults in their 30s still living with mama, enjoying home-cooked meals while navigating a tough job market. Here, staying at home doesn't ding your maturity score. It might even bump it up, thanks to strong family bonds valued above solitary independence. Head on over to Japan, where maturity is measured with a heavy ruler of social conformity and respect. Turning 20 is such a big deal that there's a national holiday called Seijin no Hai, or Coming of Age Day, where new 20-year-olds dress up in traditional attire and celebrate reaching adulthood. It's like a nationwide birthday party, but with more ceremonial gravitas.